Hey there everyone, that's Gyu here, and today I wanted to talk about my top 5 tips for RAM players. Now this list isn't in any particular order, these are just some things that I wanted to talk about that didn't really justify making their own videos for. These are some mistakes that I see RAM players make, or are just some things that other RAM players might not be aware of that can really help improve your play. Real quick, if you do enjoy this video and find it helpful, don't forget to drop a like and please consider subscribing to the channel, that way you'll know when I upload future videos. That'll really help me out, I have a lot of videos on the way that you won't want to miss out on. So my first tip is actually going to be something that's a bit more general, it's a bit more of a, a broad topic, but it's actually in regards to what type of character Ram even is. I think this is common misconception about Ram, that she's kind of this like keep away, almost like a zoner type character. A lot of people will try to play her very defensive, where they're just spacing people out with far slash, you know, jump slash, that type of thing. And while that is something that's good about her, it's something you can do and it's something you should do, especially depending on the situation or the matchup that you're playing. Generally speaking, Ram is actually more about bullying the opponent and trying to put them in the corner. Don't necessarily think of her as like a rushdown character, but you do want to play her somewhat aggressively. That way you can actually be pushing the opponent towards the corner. You're going to want to use your amazing normals to threaten the opponent to get them to have to move backwards to make your moves whiff. You're going to want to use your great movement speed because Ram has an amazing dash speed. You're going to want to use these things actually putting them in the corner because something about Ram as a character is that she's not very rewarding mid stream. She doesn't get a knockdown off of most of her exchanges that you're going to be getting. You know, the best thing you're going to get usually will be something like Daro mid serene which is just a resand. It just leaves you slightly plus. It's not as good as the actual knockdown. And her actual best conversion tool, which is H-Sword, isn't that great mid serene Sometimes it will end up with them being put in the corner so they actually have to block it. But what you really want is you want the conversions, right? Ram as a character excels once she has the opponent in the corner because her corner pressure is so good. And this is your win condition, right? This is what you're looking for in the match, is having your opponent right here. This is where your pressure is way better. This is where your moves start converting into full conversions. This is what you want. And to get that, you need to be playing somewhat aggressively in neutral. You need to be using your movement and your buttons to kind of assert yourself and control what the opponent wants to do and make them have to back up so you can get your win condition. Keeping people out with you know, jump slash and far slash and stuff like that is good, especially if you have a life lead, if you're fighting particularly volatile characters like Potemkin or Leo. You know, some matchups you will do that a bit more, but generally speaking, you want to be pushing your opponent towards the corner. So always keep that in mind when you're playing Ram. If you're struggling in a matchup, oftentimes it's probably because you're not pushing your opponent to the corner well enough. My next tip actually kind of goes hand in hand in with that, and it's that Ram players don't use their K normals enough. It's very easy to kind of get stuck in this mindset that you should always be hitting, you know, far slash or 2s or 5h or something like that with this character, because those are generally her best buttons. You know, they are the buttons you're going to be using the most often. But Ram's K normals are also very good, and they're just very underutilized by Ram players for some reason. Her 5k has great range for how little recovery it actually has. Uh, it can be a great combo starter if the opponent is close enough to you to connect into a 2d because you get a uh, full conversion off of it. Her 2k is also especially good, and something that Ram players often struggle with is with people who like to press 6p in neutral. Because 6p's will beat out a lot of her standing buttons, such as far slash or 5h, a lot of Ram players struggle with this. They don't, they don't really know how to get around this, and something that can really help you is using your 2k more, especially when you compare it with her amazing dash speed. So her 2k will just stuff out both 6p's because it has so much range to it, it has so little recovery to it, it's just such a good button. Now it doesn't necessarily convert into something most of the time, you know, a lot of the times you're not going to be in range for 2d to combo, but it's just a good check. It's a good way to kind of keep your opponent honest and neutral, and even though you're not going to get a combo off of it, sometimes you can throw people off enough that you can dash up for a throw, or you can start frame trapping them after the 2k. Stuff like that is good too. You don't always have to convert off of it. But if you have something like dash momentum using her amazing dash speed, it will combo. So make sure to use your K normals, especially 2K to check like 6Ps and whatnot. 5K is good at stuffing things like Maze Dolphin, for example. Both of these moves have very good uses and you're going to want to make use of them. My third tip is that Ram actually has amazing anti-airs. I see so many Ram players say that she struggles to anti-air a lot of things in this game, and I just don't think that's true. 
Personally, I think her 6P is one of the best anti-airs in the game. Her 6P is so fast and has so little recovery, it just ends up being such a reliable anti-air. Even if someone was going to do something like trying to double jump to bait your 6P, your 6P recovers so fast that you can just 6P again. It doesn't matter. They can't really bait it by double jumping. The hitbox on it is so good. If you get a counter hit, you get a knockdown, which lets you put your opponent towards the corner, which is you know what I was talking about earlier. That's what you want. But even just beyond 6P, she has other very reliable anti-airs. Another very good anti-air that she has is actually her 5P. Her 5P is very good at stuffing a lot of different approaches, especially instant air dashes. Uh, this comes into play against a character like Milia or Chip quite often, which are characters that people very often struggle to anti-air. Her 5P is just so fast and it hits so high up that it's a, a pretty reliable check to a lot of these air approaches and you get a full conversion off of it. You also have her JP. Her JP is fantastic. I use this quite often myself. You have air throws. You even just have her amazing dash speed to just reposition out of things. You don't always have to contest jump ins directly. There's just so many different ways to control the air with this character and you need to believe in them. Her 6P is good, her 5P is good, JP is good, air throws are good. You have so many different ways to control the air. And while maybe you don't have a one size fits all anti-air, once you actually learn to start using all of these anti-airs, you'll have a lot easier time controlling the air, even against characters like Milia, like Chip, characters that people usually struggle to actually keep on the ground. My next tip is you need to stop throwing H-Sword unless you have a good reason to do so. I see so many RAM players will just throw their sword in a situation like this, and it's just generally not worth it to do that. Ram's H sword, or both of her swords actually, are so important to her game plan. They are tied to her normals, they're tied to her conversions, her pressure. And with all that in mind, you really need to have a good idea of why you're throwing your sword in the first place. You know, if you're using it for pressure like this, that's a very good use for it. If you're using it to convert something, you know, if you're going to use it to convert something like this, that's also a very good use for it, because you're going to get a full combo off of that. If you're just like mid-screen though, and your opponent is blocking, generally it's not going to be worth it to throw the sword here, because you're just kind of wasting it, you know? There are some times where doing it in situations like this can be worth, but generally speaking, it's just not a great idea to throw your H sword willy-nilly. Even in a situation like this, this is a very common thing rain players will do, is they'll throw their sword from here, right? Your opponent's in the corner, they're gonna have to block the explosion. The thing is though, you're so far away when you throw your sword that your opponent can actually just kind of jump out or dash out for free. There's not really anything you can do to directly punish them for doing that. Now, if your opponent's pretty low on health and they're gonna die from whatever next exchange you get, Sometimes it's worth it just to do that anyways because it gets them to move and then maybe you can like anti-air them when they jump or something. Oftentimes it might not really be worth throwing your sword from here for pressure. If you're throwing your sword from here in this situation after like a, a 5H or something, you're actually doing it as a frame trap, not really to maintain your turn. You're doing this because you want to threaten your opponent and not let them jump away, right? Sometimes I'll just do something like 5H and then not actually throw the sword because my opponent is so prepared for me to throw the sword in this situation, sometimes you just don't want to throw it and you'd rather keep it because now when you do hit your opponent, if I ever do eventually hit them with something like this, I still have my eight sword to convert off of it. So just be mindful of when you're throwing your sword, you don't want to go too crazy with it. It is a very important resource, even if it is easy to get back in a lot of situations. You don't want to just throw it away and you want to have a purpose behind why you're throwing it. As an extension to that, you just gotta stop throwing that sword. It's not good. I know we all want to do it. We all want to look cool. It's always exciting whenever you snipe a Faust out of their J2K with S sword or something. It's cool, but it's just not good. In most situations, it's not going to really lead to anything. Even if they jump and then block it, they don't have to block the explosion because they're going to land on the ground. It's just not worth it to throw S sword outside of combos. My next tip is that Rams 2D is actually a good move. I know we've all had situations where we try to do 2K 2D and it just ends up whiffing because the range isn't very good. It always sucks when that happens. It's annoying. I get it. But her 2D is actually a good move in neutral, especially when it comes to some common approaches you'll see from some characters. One of the main reasons why you would use 2D is because I mentioned earlier, a lot of her things mid-screen don't really lead to good conversions. Oftentimes it's going to lead to like a Daro restand and that's about it. 
Her 2D actually is an exception to that. Her 2D can be very rewarding mid serene without a counter hit even. Let's take like a common approach for Milia. A lot of Milias will do something like dash up 2k 2d because they want to get their game plan started. And in a matchup like Milia, because she's so fast, it can be very easy to whiff your far slash. And if you do that, you're going to end up being forced to like block her 2k, or if they time it really well, they can actually just whiff punish your far slash with dash up 2k. Just like that. But Rams 2d is a good check to a lot of these approaches that some characters will try to do because it doesn't extend your hurt box very far and it doesn't have that bad of whiff recovery and it's very active it can be a good way to stuff approaches like this for very high reward even taking something like giovanna for example where usually giovanna's dash far slash could be really annoying to deal with and this will smoke a lot of people actually using far slash to stuff this is possible it's not a bad idea but it's not going to be rewarding most of the time the thing about 2D is that it can be very rewarding against this button just by doing something like this, right? Getting charged Rekka 2 into a knockdown or whatever. If you're not near the corner, you can always uh, combo into Daro if you want to. It's just a good button against a lot of like forward advancing tactics that people might want to try to do. And it's very high reward if it works out, even if you don't counter hit them. Even if it's just a call out forward movement without a button. So if I wanted uh, Giovanna to just do this, right? She's gonna dash up like that. It's still rewarding in situations like this because you still get a Daro into a conversion after. So I know it's sad how many times we've tried to do 2k 2d and it doesn't work, but don't neglect 2d. It is a good button. It's very rewarding and it's good at calling out certain approaches. I do have one quick bonus tip for you guys, and this is quite possibly the most important tip in the whole video, and that's to go watch my other videos. No seriously, I do have other videos on RAM, I have a pressure guide, I have an Oki guide, I have tons of videos on my channel that will help you, so I highly suggest you go watch them if you haven't already. I also just want to mention that I do stream over on Twitch, I stream consistently throughout the week, so if you want to stop by and ask some questions, I love helping people, or even if you just want to come by and hang out with us, that's cool too, you're more than welcome. But yeah, that's pretty much it for this video, guys. Let me know down in the comments below if you have any questions. That's going to do it for the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed, and I'll see you in the next one.